such an asshole. I got a question that the the, the answer is not good. There's no optimism. There's no, and it's not optimism. I don't do optimism. I just do realism. So our, our uh, Polish agent in the field says, Cappy, I've been hiking the Pacific Crest Trail this year, Mexico to Canada, and so far it's been challenging and a blast. Two things I have noticed, however, during this trek. One, very little signal through the remoteness of the trail, which leads to two, plenty of time on my mind to wander and think, almost too much time. One of my thoughts has been if it's possible for Western civilization to somehow rebound to some sort of normalcy and what steps it would... I don't know. <laughs> If, uh, okay, if if what steps it would take to get there. Also, I do subscribe to enjoy the decline. My question is this: What do you think the best case scenario, realistic, would be for Western civilization in the next ten to twenty years in all aspects? Relationships, sexual, family, friends, court system. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, let me read through it. This is more widespread than I thought. In all aspects: relationships, sexual, friends, family, politics, economics, court system. Dude, how long do you want this to be? I do emphasize the world realistic. You mentioned a video previous that positive requests are sometimes welcome, if not pre preferred. So I figure this would be a good original video, even though I know you're rooting for the decline. Um, name, price of it. Thanks, Polish agent in the field. If you don't respond right, that's probably have sick. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's answer the first one. Uh, one of my thoughts has been if it's possible to somehow rebound and what steps we take to get there. All right. It is not possible to rebound uh and for one general reason I'm, I'm trying to simplify so it's a digestible answer uh we have made times so easy and so good with not only original production which spoiled the baby boomers but then we borrowed money to spoil gen x and now we're just printing money to spoil the millennials and gen zers we have now prevented three coming up on four generations of Americans and Westerners in general to avoid having to produce enough economic production to support themselves <clears throat> and have been more or less a parasite upon the rest of the world. And that we get away with that by swinging our world reserve currency dick. We have the world's largest economy. We have the world's largest military. We have the world's, uh, we have nuclear weapons. And also pointing a blaming finger at the rest of the world who are printing off even more money than we are and are more corrupt than we are. I, I don't know how many times we've said we are the hottest fat chick in a party of fat chicks. We are the last horse in the glue factory. We're the smartest kid on the short bus. It looks like it'll continue to do that. <clears throat> so I think financial stability uh, relative to the rest of the world is going to continue. The U.S. will still be kind of the more stable of the group. Um, but as you've noticed, we can't act truly economically our uh, re-mentally illed, or not ill, but mentally impaired, uh, and not have any consequences, you know, like the education bubble, you have the housing prices very high. So you have that there. We're not going to rebound to normalcy uh, because the the and this gets back to the, here's the whole point. We have destroyed the work act ethic of the of the population. People don't want to work. If you don't work, you don't have stuff. So we got to borrow. We got to print. And we got to buy it from from the people who will will work and produce the stuff. China, <clears throat> and then that is the financial. Re you want a financial rebound? We need basically. You know, another 80% of the population to work, of working age population. And not not like work, make work government jobs and academia. And I'm going to uh, fight for social justice and be an active. No, like you get your ass into a factory or tradesman, truck drivers, that kind of genuine economic production. Not half the crap that women major and then have make work government jobs fixing all of society's problems, which they've done a tremendous job of, by the way. You girls have just... All you social workers have just kicked so much ass. You have achieved utopia. Look at all the Democrat adults shitting in the streets. <clears throat> so that's your basic rank brass tax of the economy. People need to work. Now, and, and that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You have three generations of adult children that just, they're too old. Their brains are too, I mean, it would take a, a huge starvation. It would take a, a true collapse 
to pe- for people to get like, oh my God, I got to work or I'm going to die because there ain't no government aid anymore. Or there is government aid, but it doesn't buy us anything because China cut us off from supplying us with the things we need. And the farmer's like, screw you, we're going home. The, cart- the farmers became cartmen and they're just growing enough food for themselves. All right. Then, then people are going to wake up. I think most people will eat a bullet before they, before they get a, a job before they work but that there's you see what i'm saying we've raised nearly all the people alive today have no work and even if you got a skill or a trade they're not responsible and we talked about this with chad how cpas accountants you, know, you think oh they're pretty reliable and no they're just as lazy they just got a degree and they passed the test but whether they show up on time and do the job same thing with tradesmen generally yes we're all pro tradesmen we, you do you know you do you have a good skill good luck getting them to show up on time and do a job So when we're all starving and and it's like, oh, crap, what's that thing we have to do to survive work? So there is no rebound to normalcy from here. We are going to as long as we keep having the money printer go burr and the idiots of the world buy U.S. dollars, this will continue. It'll be a slow decay. But but we still have to. It's no different than an addict. You have to hit absolute bottom. You and you either die or decide you want to live, and it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It may not happen in our lifetime, because um, I think we could keep we could keep this game up as long as the rest of the world wants to keep printing off money. Okay, we we'll could all all the fat chicks at the fat chick party are going to get increasingly fat, and as long as the U.S. doesn't get as fat. Maintains the she's the thinnest one there. She's still going to be the hottest fat chick at the fat chick party. It's just going to be increasingly a party you don't want to go to. Now you go on to the other non-economic things. So uh, my question is, what do you think the best case scenario realistic for Western civilization next 10 to 20 years will be in all aspects, relationships, friendless, politics, court system? I do emphasize the world realistic. All right. So. Let me explain why I think where the best environments will be within the West. And what I think you're going to see is a fragmentation and a um, flight of quality, quality flight. Sometimes they call it capital flight, meaning people are taking their money out of a country because it's becoming communist and they capital flight. There's also brain drain or going galt. Um, A lot of people like I'm, you know, I'm I'm a really intelligent um, Ghanaian. Well, there's no economic tune and opportunities in Ghana. So what ends up having to go to the West, their best and brightest go overseas and they stay overseas. They don't come back to Ghana to help out Ghana. <clears throat> so you might have that too. A flight to Gulch, Gulch that type of thing. Um, and so what's going to happen, I think, is it's going to, uh, it's not going to be a national environment. It's going to be what local environments. I'll give you an example. Florida. Florida is a local not micro, but uh, it's it's not a national, it's not a macro environment. It's a community with an environment. And Florida as a community is doing very well. Why? Because all the productive people, all the people who kind of don't want to be fat, disgusting slobs of crap are going to Florida because there's reasonably hot girls there. There's economic opportunity. There's freedom, things like that. People getting out of California, which I know a lot of you don't like, but you know some of these people are productive people. Like, I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm going to go to... Nevada, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. And you look at Vegas, it's booming, especially now that they remove the, the restrictions. People, there's a housing boom. Uh, people are having good times. Of course, everyone has a good time in Vegas. Uh, but Reno and other border towns, you know, with California, uh, you know, you're starting to see the, the producers are going elsewhere. You see it on an international level. Uh, people are expatting to, to disproportionately Asian and Eastern European cultures where it's more traditional. Um, you see countries that are, are, uh, former Soviet bloc that are having a, uh, a renaissance, uh, Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic, even Russia. If you look at their fundamentals are doing very good. Russia is a thin, attractive woman at a thin, attractive woman party may not be a lot of women at that party, but it's there. And I know you guys, Oh my God, the war. No, look at GDP growth. That's all that other kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so there's going to be other, as the world becomes more globalized and because we have reasonable states rights, uh, people are going to go. And then you also see where it's like, no, a lot of people are going to small little towns. R- remote work is allowing for this. You may have not like COVID, but it did like force the boomers to finally realize, uh, 
Okay, we'll let you work remote, but don't have fun. Don't have a better life than me. I need you to have a miserable life like me, to force three times of commuting and having three heart attacks. And so remote work is allowing uh, a generation of uh, two generations <clears throat> to go and live where they want. And I would also say the ultimate going galt response, and this isn't just relegated to uh, conservative libertarian people in our political school of thought, uh, but people are just not having kids, which frees up a lot of freedom. It's like, okay, my taxes are up, but I net I don't have kids. And now I'm free to do whatever I want. I go to Moab, got van life. People are traveling around. They're having fun. They're like giving the bird to, to uh, the people currently in charge of Western civilization. And you have a minimalist movement along with that where people, you're, you're, in other words, there are <clears throat> not only physical locales people are flighting to, there are philosophical, ideological mental locales located mentally philosophically where people are just like no i'm traveling man really like, legit enjoy the decline i'm out no I'm, i think i'm gonna go ride around in portugal i think i'm gonna you know bum around in southeast asia for a while and what you're having then is a a, a, a flight of otherwise quality people you know just just but you're having a flight, not only physically of people going overseas or leaving the major metros or what was traditionally Western centers of commerce and industry. They're, they're, they're also fleeing the culture. They're also abandoning the culture. So there's a cultural exodus as well out of the filth that Western civilization has become. You know, and, and you could see exactly like, you know, take the most uh, leftist culturalist filth in a micro economy that would probably be San Francisco or Portland. Well, who's there? You know, adult Democrats who crap in the streets, leftists, mentally ill people. Like, really, I have a buddy who's got a, a, a an apartment. Um, you know, there's other people in this apartment building, and all of a sudden, now the adult Democrats are shitting on their stoop. The, the poop wave made it to there. And everyone except my buddy is like, well, at least, you, you know, people would, would complain. And then the response is, you should be thankful you have housing. Like, I don't know what it's like to be so mentally ill and so self-loathing and so programmed to be a slave to the parasite class that you immediately virtue signal how awesome you are and that it's okay for an adult Democrat to shit in your stoop. All right. Well, people are leaving that. And it's like, okay, so Western, so, so, you know, if there is a collapse and let's, let's see how this would play out in terms of a, an actual collapse, the cities are done. Anything that's blue is done. You won't make it a month. Um, they'll, they'll die. They'll all kill each other. <clears throat> that's not gonna, that's not gonna last. Uh, they're going to try and get out into the, the suburbs and, and the rural, the rural people. If there is, if there's a true collapse, the rural people are going to have none of it. None of it. They are itching to just like oh there ain't you banned the cops you got rid of law and order did you now i i really don't think leftists have thought that one through but that's all right um but that that is how debased and debauched and worthless that culture has become from an economic standpoint culturally i cannot think of a more miserable i've been thinking about writing a book called miserable leftists but no leftist would read it it would really be like look you have placed all your value in an ideology that is basically stealing and parasitism. Worse, you've put all your value in traits you were born with, traitism, which I guess this could be a book on its own, but I just like the concept. I'm, I kind of would like to have fun and stop writing books. Not forever, just I don't want to write another book. It's summer. Um, <clears throat> and you look at leftists, they're not happy people. They're absolutely miserable. Uh, and and I would say now they're also becoming mentally ill where, OK, you know, Cinco de Mayo, who does like St. Patrick's Day? OK, oh, you're Irish celebrate. OK, you're, you're, you're Mexican celebrate your battle against the French battle of Veracruz. Was that it? Was that correct? Somebody Mexican tell me if my history is correct. Um, OK, uh, whatever I am, Scandinavian days. Uh, there's nothing to celebrate about being Scandinavian. Oh, I hate myself. Hate myself days. It's the Scandinavian biggest festival. Let me slash my wrists. 
Oh, you must be Scandinavian. I am. I hate myself so much. Um, but uh, it, that's one it, where you actually celebrate some cultural stuff that's kind of cool. But then what's your entire value? Like, and it's so sad you see these polls. Like, how how vital or how important is your race to your to your identity? And and black people, it's like ninety four percent. Like, dude, I I don't look at my I, my life is too short to say, wow, I'm awesome because I'm white. Look at those brown eyes. Holy cow, I'm a brown eyed white person male. Like, you have no value. If that's your, if that's your, if you're celebrating traits, there's no value there. I'm an engineer who just happened to be born, whatever. Asian. Oh, okay. Well, look at all this stuff I did. Look at these things I made. Look at these works of arts I created. Oh, you're an artist. You did. Or oh, look at this dance I've done. Uh, look at what, whatever. You know, look at this family I raised. Normally, there's there's value in family. That's normally what gave people value in life. <clears throat> now people are celebrating the way they were born, <laughs> and not only celebrating, but that's their most important. That's the thing of their life. Well, that's a recipe for misery. Then you want to turn it up. Now we have everyone so saying, okay, well, I wasn't born with the, the victimhood or the preferential treatments or, or traits. So now, oh, I'm going to choose the sexuality. It's like, is that really a choice? Shouldn't you kind of be attracted to who you're attracted to? I'm being serious. Like whether you're, uh, let's say you are, you aren't straight. That's the simplest way to say it. You're not straight, whatever various uh, genders that might result in. Well, if you're not straight and you're legit and you're honest with yourself, oh, okay, I am gay or I am bi, and you're honest about it. Okay, cool. <clears throat> but that ain't happening, right? That's like I'd say 10% of the population now. What is it? One in five Zoomers claim they're not straight. Dude, out, out of that 20%, there's 3% you know, of the 20% that are legit not straight, okay? That's who they genuinely are. That That's who they're attracted to. The other 17%, you're all faking it. And now that becomes your identity and how you're going to derive happiness. You know, and and I, I don't know because I've never done it, but I'm going to think that if I had to start sucking dick for a living, or not for a living, but if I lied to myself about my sexuality, I'm straight. I'm straight. But if I had like, I was so desperate to get value in my life that I claimed to be gay and started having sex with men when in fact I am not gay, that would fuck with your head. And now <clears throat> you start to see this insanity form where, and, and not solely because you're being, you're, you're claiming a sexuality that you're not, but you're starting, you're trying to derive value in your life from a trait, which is not possible. All right. You also have the victimhood mentality that comes with traitism, which has got to put you in a miserable mood where everyone who isn't your trait is out to get you. And you're a victim of the people who don't have your trait. To I'm going to base my entire life on a trait, whether I am born with it or I chose it or not, they're miserable. And I'll give you an example because <clears throat> this has been the, like, look at feminists. Now, I'm not talking women who are just like, well, should, I'm for the equal treatment of women. I'm not talking those. I'm talking those who are like, that's their value. Have you seen a happy feminist? Like if you if you go on the dating profile and they're described like that's in the day, I'm a feminist. They're not smiling. They're not happy. I'm an activist, you know, they're not happy. Look at all the Democrats. They're not happy. It's like, dude, you have got half a GDP. You got all these programs and you're still not happy. They're not, they're never going to be happy because they don't do anything in their lives. Their entire value is wrapped up in themselves, whether traits they're born with beliefs they have, including which, which gender or sex uh, sexuality they have an ideology that is parasitic. And, and they don't have, they don't have love. They don't have, it, in other words, it's an ultimately selfish ideology they follow and they're not selfless. So therefore they can't form any good quality relationships with other people. I mean, Hillary Clinton, you, th you think she formed relationships with other people? Bill formed relationships with other people. Bill's happy. <laughs> Uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi, does she look happy? She don't spend time with her grandchildren. She's like, I hate Republicans. I hate white males. Ah! Like, wow. And so <clears throat> culturally, I, you know, the, you, your relationships, well, that's gone down the pot. Okay, that's down the toilet. You see where that, 
friends. Oh, you have uh, you better believe in, the, you know, the masks and the, the disease and the covid. I mean, how many people lost their friends? You didn't have those friends. They're, they're more they, they put their ideology, the religion, uh, their politics, their their traits above everything else. Family. I mean, I got people like, no, I will not do you. No, I don't tolerate parasites in my in my household. No, there is no parasites. You will not vote to increase my slavery. You will not do You could do it, but we ain't friends no more. We ain't family no more. Um, <clears throat> politics is just going to get crazier and crazier. Like, I'm always curious, like, what's the left going to come up with next? You know, you, you, you have, like, kids being brainwashed in school. Oh, little Jimmy, maybe you like licking dick, you know? So I'm, I'm, and I'm always, I'm fascinated. Like what's next, what variant, what trait, what thing that does not require work or sacrifice or investment are you going to herald as something value or virtuous so that you're worthless, useless human beings. This, this, this sea of sheep you've created. Like, Oh, I'm wearing a mask. I'm a good person. I'm not kidding. I'm like, wow, I, that, that's a horrible life. That's just a wasted life. Um, you know, like, well, uh, it, and it it really does make like, wow, she dyed her hair green. That like, makes it look tame. <laughs> Ooh, you got tattoos. You, you see what I'm saying? Like anything but hard work, anything but selflessness and considering others, anything but that. And so you you just keep dividing the individual into more, more, more atomic, smaller levels of of variance and quality, not qualities, traits, because the quality indicates something of value for the rest of society. Like what trait, you know, and you saw that like, well, today I'm pansexual, but tomorrow I'll be safe. You'll say, you know, it's fluid. It's like, wow, well, I, I, you know, I don't, my life is too valuable to even be thinking about stuff like that. Like, I want to go for a hike. Don't you want to live? No, they want to sit there and not work. Living takes effort. And so you're going to have people who are not living and you truly have the NPCs and the zombies. Where they're just searching for the latest, you know, Ukraine, whatever. I, you know, the meme, I support the current thing. Because these are not individuals. These are people who are debatably whether or not they're alive. And they are miserable. They are absolutely miserable. And so what you're going to see <clears throat> is a, a culture, a society where the majority of them their mission in life is to find value through a belief or a trait or a fad even, it's just going to decay. And, and you could see it physically. You're going to see fatter people. You're going to see uglier people. You're going to see crazier, zany. Look how zany I am. I have pink hair with the nose ring. Oh, st stand by, sister. Watch out this. I have blue hair with the nose ring and a sleeve. And and I don't know, you're just going to get a circus and a freak show going on. And there will be an abandon. Anything that's hard or takes effort, you know, like genuine beauty, genuine art, genuine construction, genuine production is going to be more and more marginalized. And you're going to have, what, sensationalism? I mean, we're going to have a culture of clickbait. Woo! Look out, saucy! I mean, how many of you idiots are watching that Johnny Depp he Amber Heard thing? Like, is that your life? Are you excited about that? Yeah, man, I went hiking with with my buddies yesterday. It was really cool. It was really cool. And all we did was slam on each other. It was really neat. <clears throat> um, so you're just gonna see uh, a decay on every level uh, as your average human just avoids work and becomes increasingly desperate to find value in what were already worthless things <laughs> but it'll it'll be it'll be like middle school and you're like oh amy bought the oh it's then it's you have to have the marith burjo jeans oh you gotta have the Cavarishi shirt and, you know, it's just going to be people you don't want to hang out with. So there's not going to be any increase. And, and don't even get me started about the sexes. I mean, everyone's just going to get fat and increasingly ugly. I mean, you see that. Okay, think about how warped and fucked up this is. <clears throat> Women are celebrating being fat. The Sports Illustrated, whatever, latest one. Now it's a fat chick on the, like, <laughs> there you go. And what's great is it's really easy to be debauched and disgusting and revolting 
and and unimpressive and we're going to celebrate being a loser that's it so what you're, you're going to celebrate being a loser because that's easy of course the celebrations like awards and degrees and other things that would have conferred an achievement in the past will mean nothing i mean obviously like a college degree means nothing it doesn't mean it's, it's complete if anything you don't want to hire those people the um the oscars you know, usually best actor, best actress, best film that would have meant something. Now it's a joke. It's just, it's completely worthless. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just filth. So you're going to see the people who want to actually live a life, have a quality life, have quality people around quality culture. They're going to go to other places that maintain their culture. I'm not kidding. Like, you know, even, even Muslim culture, which is varied and, and truly diverse. You know, there's a difference between say Iran and in Dubai. But, uh, you know, the, there's some pretty mosques. There's some beauty. Go to Constantinople. Some beautiful architecture there. Dubai, more modern. Completely different town. Very different town. But they got their culture together. It's stable in that regard. And there's some, there's some forms of excellence and beauty. Now, you may not agree with Islam, but there's no denying that having that cultural stability generally moved or incentivized people within that culture to achieve excellence of some kind. So <clears throat> I think you're going to see P Asian culture as well. Like I'm like, okay, the Japanese insist on being pretty Japanese. I really think so. And so if I go to Japan, I'm going to have a feeling I'm going to see color. Now, I may not, may not be my cup of tea, but it will be some form of excellence, some form of production, some form of value. And so I think that's what you're going to have. So you're going to have people move to their enclaves within the United States. Uh, cities and in generally blue states are just going to be worthless. I mean, they're just going to be like, who the fuck? I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. Leftists will wallow in their own fill. I mean, literally, they're just going to shit and live in their own shit. That's what they're going to do because they can't there, you know, oh, we're just so cultured. Uh, but the productive people are going to go to their respective enclaves. They'll find their 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 community or, or group, or they'll go overseas and go to different. And I think you're just going to see a slow dissemination of Western culture. And keep in mind, it's, it's not the people. I mean, the people are <clears throat> the vessels by which culture is carried. But Western culture is not going to go anywhere. Because if you re read my book, uh, Enjoy the Decline, the concept of America is very simple. Libertarianism, freedom, leave me alone, the individual. That will never go away. That's been the fight for humanity this entire time. So you're not, you can't get rid of an idea. Um, so Western culture, Western civilization, that's going to go, that, that will be part of the human DNA for, it will go somewhere. <clears throat> but the United States, you know, the physical uh, countries, culture is within uh, that those will go away i mean the lines might still be in the ground but you know the united states will start looking like whatever the latest uh super bowl halftime show it'll be uh, idiocracy it will it'll be idiocracy but they're, and they're gonna be like how we get to the moon oh my god they'll try and rewrite history oh they enslaved all the black people black people got us to the moon the slaves got us to the moon like, okay sure whatever but inevitably Common sense will come back and they're like, ah, oh, the Roman Empire failed because they were, they had a slave class. They were lazy people. They became debauched and then they didn't keep the, their legions up, expanded the empire too much. So, um, <clears throat> the best case scenario, next 10 to 20 years, you're going to see higher prices, but still stability because the U.S. dollar will still be the world's reserve currency. You will see the individuals move. You see, I think marriage rates, they're already falling, but they're going to drop. They're going to drop dramatically. Um, I think you'll have the electricity on, but again, the individuals are going to probably get solar panels and they're going to have their little odd. But <clears throat> yeah, next 10 to 20 years, it's just going to be a slow decline, a slow decline, but we're still going to be better than Canada. You know, <laughs> we're still going to be better than Canada. Still going to be better than Australia. We got states' rights, thank God. But you know, we're just going to be we're going to be fatter. I was talking about. I'm like, well, what a what a what's everyone going to look like? You know, we're going to be more people on rascals. 
size doesn't get any. Girls are going to have crazier hair and more piercings. Tess Holiday will be even fatter. We're going to have new uh, sexualities to, to claim that you have. <clears throat> there will be new mental disorders. Immigrant, I have a, the, this, the disease. And it'll be... But then you'll go back home to your culture and your community. Like, you know, when I play poker, I go to a cigar lounge. It's normal people. I don't care what Tess Holliday did. I don't care what a crazy feminist did. I know that they're miserable and their lives suck. In the meantime, I'm going to have fun. And that's the best thing you can do is you as the individual go have fun. I don't watch the news. Don't watch the news. Why would you watch the news? Look at the debauched crazy shit leftists who shit in the street are doing now. Oh, they want more money, huh? No kidding. I wonder if that will solve the problem and make them happy. <clears throat> so there you go. That's that's what I think. Wow, 403. You guys all would subscribe, but I appreciate it. I'll get through the super chats and we'll continue on. Uh, I got to go do my thing. Yeah, I, I just did two uh, videos. We're going to get hired. Seven steps to five and five bucks. How do I get the girl's question was definitely a joke. You don't even want to see the land whales here in Cleveland. Cleveland, I thought you were in, in Montana. Though the North Rapid Walmart was bad. Yeah, it's well, the South one's bad, too. It's it's not. Don't don't come to South Dakota if you're looking for the girl. So, OK, don't go to the West if you're looking for the girl. So, you know, come here if you want to hike and ride motorcycle and be left alone. Colin Benton, two bucks. What's the USA Southwest going to do? There's no water. No, there's water. There's there's the there's uh, Lake Mead and <clears throat> various dams. Like once California uh, goes away where there's no farmers in Fresno Valley, uh, Valley anymore, there's going to be lots of water in the, in the Hoover Dam, Mead uh, Lake or Lake Mead. Hat clogs two bucks. Av, Cappy, Henderino soon. Any good food there? I don't know. I don't, don't take us to the one Seth Himes took us to some organic place. Don't go there. Don't go to any organic place in Reno. I love Seth, but he doesn't know his restaurants. Uh, aside from there, I don't remember eating anywhere. Hat and clogs, five bucks. Yes, Capi Puebla and Veracruz. And it's more of an American thing. Drinko de Mayo. Yeah, no, I, St. Patrick's Day. I don't think they even celebrate it in Ireland. <clears throat> yeah. There's got to be a, like a day the Irish or the Mexicans celebrate in their own country, right? What is that day? And here uh, from Canada where they don't celebrate any day because, oh, shit, we're Canadians. <laughs> Ten dollars, given that women don't need men anymore due to social media. Well, and government and and technology and advances in economics, they really don't need you. That's not a political opinion. That's a fact. Neither good nor bad. Giving them an inflated ego and believing they can attain a nine out of ten man. What do the rest of us men do? I, God, Jesus Christ, buddy, I write these books. The menu. Life without the opposite says this is literally the why I wrote this book. This is what you do. It's a list of everything in life you can do. Organize it into categories, of course. Men don't need women. Women don't need men. And y'all don't like each other that much. We got it. Men got the, I think men are getting the message loud and clear lady. You really don't want us them. I got, unless we're a nine or a 10. I got that. All right. Well, we're not going to waste our life at the gym. Right, we'll go to the gym, get in good, good enough shape for our own health. But I, I'm, I'm, dude, to become a, a, a Chippendale or a, a Thunder Down Under guy, that is a full time job, and it's a life of misery. That's why they make good money. I'm, I'm dying. Okay, we're all dying. I'm not wasting it I'm trying to get tail. I'm just not. I'll pay for it. I really will. My life is just too short and too valuable. Here's what I'm going to do outside. It, in a day, and this is just good. Even if you're married or you got some, a special someone, you should still have your own life and your own hobbies. The menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex, paperback, Kindle, audio, and hardcover. And I'm not joking. It is 80% of you. It is 80%. <clears throat> the girls are, they are not interested in anything but top 20%. And I would say it's more like 15. I thought I saw on more super chats. Just bear with me. <clears throat> oh, 
boy, a lot of lively chat for a Tuesday. Uh, Zach Redpillar, twenty generous dollars. I disagree with you on the reserve currency status of the U.S. Russia, China, some Middle Eastern countries are already taking steps to switch to the petrol dollar. It may take time and pain, but by twenty years, maybe. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying the dollar can't be dethroned, and and that those are certainly the measures the right countries would take. But Russia and China, and as well as the Middle Eastern countries, are horrendously corrupt, horribly corrupt. And China's finances are not as good as Russia's, but China is the the second largest economy. So they got a long ways to go to clean up that mess. They got a long ways to go. So I'm I'm not I'm, I'm I ironically I'm quite optimistic on the U.S. dollar as a as a reserve currency. AI Empire five British pounds. How do I opt out of paying for boomers crap? Given that birth rates in the West are low and population is getting older, are millennials screwed? Um, you get out of it by becoming a minimalist. Okay, so they can't tax you. <clears throat> you move out of the country. I mean, that's a way to do it. You just move. Go to a traditional cultural uh, area. That could be a, a theocracy that's relatively free, like Dubai, um, Saudi Arabia ain't all that free, but, you know, like a Muslim country. Turkey, I hear good things about Turkey. Or you go to a, a, a Hispanic Latin country where, okay, maybe it's corrupt, but they leave you alone. Even though Brazil is Portuguese, you know, maybe Brazil. Um, but yeah, or an Asian culture. It really is money is money's one thing, guys, but I don't know about you, but I want to go to a culture where there's not fat people. And it has nothing to do with me wanting to see skinny chicks. I'm just sick and tired of looking at fat people. I I'm sick and tired of going into a bar or restaurant and there's the sports bowl. I want to go into a quiet cafe where there is no loud noise. Noise is starting to piss me off. I'm sick and tired of loud, fat Americans. Um, <clears throat> are millennials screwed? Yeah, you're screwed. You all followed what the boomers told you, and now you're doing the exact same thing the boomers did to your children. The millennials are completely screwed. Not, not every millennial. Again, the individual. There are many millennials who majored in the right thing and are doing van life or having a good old time. But generally, as a culture, a, a generation, yes, the millennials are screwed. Uh, Derek Yeager, two bucks. I just ordered the menu over the weekend. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. It's a short read. I mean, it's not it's not that long, but it's a good reference book to have. And I think it will prevent a lot of suicide. I really think so. And ladies, there's a whole chapter in there for you. It is pro-female. In a modern sense, it is very pro-feminist. A friend had height surgery, went from five, seven to six foot. Now he says he bangs more girls easily, invested in the limb length thing instead of clothes, house, or car. Uh, I can't argue with you. I really can't. I can't argue with you. That is true. We're caught up. We're caught up. All right, there you guys go. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. Toodles.